66. We're with Scott Miller, our grand prize winner for the Phillips $66,000 free throw giveaway. He has four free throws, each worth $69,500. Scott, let's do it. All right, Scott has been practicing. I thought for a second he was going to shoot back there. Yes, $16,500. One more for Scott Miller from Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, that's $33,000. Way to go, Scott. What a stroke. Okay, that's $49,500 for Scott Miller. One more, and it's 66,000. Let's hear it for Scott. Oh! Not a problem. Clayton Reeser from Phillips, president of marketing, here with us now. Clayton? Hey, Scott. Great job. I'm, I'm proud, proud to give you a check for $49,500. Way to go, Scott. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'd like to say on behalf of all of our branded marketers, Conoco Phillips employees, thank you for your participation. We appreciate your business at Phillips 66, and thanks for being such a great Big 12 fan. Thanks, Phillips 66, and it's just awesome. My wife and daughter, my rebounders helped me out all the last two weeks, so I'll bring on the Big 12. This is a great event. Thank you, Phillips 66. Thank you, Scott Miller. One more round of applause. $49,500. We'll be right back with more from Studio 66. have to do to pull off the upset today? Well, they're going to have to play physical. They're going to have to take care of the basketball. My belief is to pound the ball inside, try to get KU's big guys in foul trouble, and Dominique Kirk, he's been having a great tournament so far, be more aggressive. Well, seven days ago, these two teams played in College Station. It was a 72-55 win for the Jayhawks. Dominique Kirk did not have a great game a week ago, but last night in the quarterfinals, different story. He looked a little bit like AC Law right there. He's been very aggressive here in the tournament so far, and they need him to score. Been a very big defensive stalwart for him, but he needs to score. This should be interesting. Mark Turgeon talked about that game seven days ago in the press conference last night, and Turgeon feels that his team is ready to play against the heavily favored Jayhawks. Playing them a week ago is going to help us. They're not going to change anything. We're not going to change anything. I'm a little concerned. You know, they didn't play well tonight for them, and <clears throat> they're going to start with a lot more energy than they did tonight. And KU to me is all about energy. When they have high energy, they're good. They had unbelievable energy at our place a week ago. <clears throat> and we didn't play that bad. I mean, people can say what they want. Now, we didn't finish the game well, and we've done that a few times this year. But, I mean, we played well. So I'm a little... A little nervous going in tomorrow, knowing that they're going to be a lot fresher than we are. Um, and uh, we're going to have to be a little bit deeper, play them a little bit more depth, and our guys are going to have to step up and, and try to hang around. But we got to, you know, they watch the same game you guys watched tonight, and so they're going to come after us and pressure us, and we got to be able to handle it. And this is a big deal for Mark Turgeon, who grew up around this area, he used to watch the Jayhawks, played for the Jayhawks, coached for the Jayhawks, and now an opportunity to beat KU. Well, he's going to have his hands full now because KU, if they come out motivated and jump on Texas A&M early, I believe this game will not go the distance. I believe KU will have the knockout punch today against A&M. 
Well, there's no question. It's a home court advantage for the Jayhawks. Bill Self knows that. The tickets are equ equally distributed unless the Jayhawks are on the court. Brought to you by Phillips 66, gasoline specially formulated to clean fuel injectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. Champion, it's how you play. Advance Auto Parts, keep the wheels turning. Red Lobster, indulge in your favorite lobster creation during Lobster Fest at Red Lobster. And by Tough Shed, a million uses, one of them tough enough to protect whatever's valuable to you. And welcome back to Sprint Center in Kansas City, the second semifinal game on a Saturday afternoon, a day that started in snow in Kansas City, probably going to end in sunshine, and the Jayhawks and the Aggies both hoping that sun can shine on them. It already did on the Texas Longhorns. They are in the championship game. The number one seed is in, the number two seed, Kansas, trying to get there. Two big teams. In fact, the two biggest teams in the conference match up here this afternoon. Kansas, the most powerful team in the league, but Texas Texas A&M has the front line and the strength to match up with KU. A lot of stars on both these teams. Let's pick two. Who's on Star Watch today? Well, I think we go inside with uh, with the Kansas Jayhawks and we'll look at Darnell Jackson. Really kind of turned that ball game around last night with KU. With his defense, had three steals early in the second half. Dominique Kirk got A&M going early last night with three-point shooting. He had five threes in the ball game on his way to 19 points in their Friday night win. The Aggies have had to play two tough games. Kansas has played one. AM will start it like this. Dominique Kirk, what a player, a senior at a guard along with Donald Sloan, young man that just lost his mother a couple of days ago. Josh Carter's in there along with Joseph Jones, a big, strong senior, and Brian Davis, their freshman center, DeAndre Jordan, has been under the weather. They say he's feeling better today. He will not start for the Jayhawks of Kansas. Coming into this thing at 29 and 3, number 5 in the country, number 2 seed in the tournament. What a lineup. Russell Robinson, Mario Chalmers, and Brandon Rush, along with the two big guys up front, Darnell Jackson and Darrell Arthur, are starting lineups brought to you by Tough Shed. Take a look at Bill Self on the Kansas bench. He has won at least 23 games in each of the last 10 years. At Kansas, he has won 34 and 32. And Mark Turgeon, first year on the A&M bench, played at Hayden High School in Topeka, right down the road from Lawrence, played at KU, as that coach and coach at KU. He's got a lot of KU in that pedigree, but he is an Aggie right now, and hoping that he can dump his alma mater here in the semifinal game today. He brings him in at 24 and 9 on the season. We talked about this before. They have been the box of chocolate, Steve. You don't know what you're going to get. Well, you really like what you have gotten out of them so far this weekend. They were outstanding here on Thursday night as they knock off Iowa State. They were terrific here last night as they win against Kansas State, who was a favored team. And this Texas A&M team was the preseason third pick in the conference. So I think if you looked ahead and you looked at this afternoon of the possible matchups, most people would figure A&M would be in this game. And has been involved in a couple of tough physical games here in this championship. And KU last night ran into a buzzsaw in the first half of Nebraska. Boy, the, the Huskers really, really took it to them in the first half of that ball game. Here's your Big 12 tip note. The Aggies' second appearance in the semifinals. Kansas has won five of these Big 12 championships. And down through the years, they are 53 and 22 in this tournament. Bill Self said after the ball game last night, his team came out tight last night. Let's see how they start here this evening. Well, Darnell Jackson threw a kind of a short line drive up there. Got it to stick. The Jayhawks draw first blood. Cross pick that time in the paint for Kansas. Good ball movement out front. Guards do a super job for the Jayhawks distributing the basketball. When they get caught in the half-court game, they like to pound it inside first, see if they can get something going, and then bring it back outside. Well, Sloan, that was kind of a half-shot, half-pass right there. It winds up in the Aggies' hands with 13 to shoot. 
Mario Chalmers defending him outside. Dominique Kirk. Be interesting to see how these teams play, Fred. I'm sure AM is going to want to challenge the front line of Kansas that has a tendency to get into foul trouble. Last night against Kansas State, it was the AM front line that got into foul trouble, and Mark Turgeon was able to steer his way through troubled waters in that game. Kirk got that shot off with one second left on the shot clock. They go into one of the bigs again, and Darrell Arthur's fouled. Joseph Jones and Brian Davis were both there, and the foul is on Joseph Jones. Well, Kansas' first two possessions, they're looking to go inside. There's the back pick from Mario Chalmers. Arnold Jackson moving his way towards the hoop. It's Chalmers on the assist. Kansas moving the ball well early in their first two possessions. Darrell Arthur, a 6'9 sophomore from Dallas. It's the free throw down. How about this? Every senior class since 86 and 87 at the University of Kansas has left school with at least 100 wins. How about tradition? Well, how about matching up teams with the head coach? Bill Self in his last 10 years has finished either first or second in his conference. So this school has a lot of things going for him. All they go back to is the guy that invented the game. That's all. <laughs> and he didn't have a real good record. <laughs> He's the only <laughs> losing coach in the history of the school. Kansas goes with a three out, two in look. Three excellent shooters on the perimeter. Two power guys inside. That's the biggest and strongest that they feature in Darnell Jackson. You know, the one thread running through all that at KU has been outstanding coaching. Boy, they've had some. Dominique Kirk hit a shot at a three. Don't want to put too much on one particular player, but Dominique Kirk really needs to come out and play well, shoot well. That's the one thing he can really do to help his ball club. About half his shots are from deep. He needs to hit a high percentage today. Rush short with the try. Down comes AM with the basketball. Dominique Kirk. We're tied at three in the early going. And you question the depth of Texas AM. They thought they had a lot of depth when they just cruised through the preseason. When they got into league play, lost three out of their first four games. All of a sudden, they started to question the strength of their bench and how much depth they've had. But they started to show more depth recently because they've done a good job of developing young players. Ryan Davis misses the shot. I mentioned James Naismith, the inventor of the game. Let's go back and take a look first at Kirk's three-point try. Dominic Kirk had five threes in the ball game last night against Kansas State. He was the difference maker. Got them going early in the ball game. Hit some clutch threes late. In fact, he went five of six from behind the arc here last night. Paul Gallen was a student of James Naismith, and he asked. Paul Gallen one time, Mr. Naismith did, what do you want to do, Forrest, when you get out of school? And he said, I want to coach basketball. And Naismith said, you don't coach basketball, son. It's a game. You just play it. I believe his school has just proved that theory. <laughs> Brian Davis, nice soft touch. Got them both. Talk about AM developing young players. Brian Davis would be one of them. 6'9 sophomore out of Dallas. Exactly. First 12 players on this AM team in state players. All of them come from the state of Texas. The Yankees in the process of building a basketball tradition. They have so many great traditions of that school in every phase of student life and football. And it's some of them carrying over to basketball now that they are building a winning program down there. Arnell Jackson that's a tough shot. The tip try won't go either. And AM has it. Picked up there by Josh Carter. Big question all season long. Who is the go-to guy for Kansas? Well, early on the ball game here this afternoon, it's Darnell Jackson. Robinson Chalmers. What a great two on one for Mario Chalmers with the finish. How about Mario Chalmers' defense? He actually beat the wing player to that entry pass. Now, there are a couple coaches in this league that told me their point guard brings the ball down the floor, find Mario Chalmers, initiate the offense to the other side of the floor. Some of the coaches in this league think he's that good. Well, if you can get the ball to Robinson Chalmers, Sharon Collins when he's in there, they're going to know what to do with it. It's going to the right place. Davis working hard down low against Darrell Arthur and a little jumper off the back of the rim. He's got it back and he got it blocked a little bit by Darnell Jackson, but they get it back and score. Well, few teams in the league are able to get second and third chance opportunities against this Kansas front line, but AM is a team that can match up, can battle and come out with an even deal on the boards against the Jayhawks. Sloan trying to push it for the Aggies. Chalmers right there. Dominique Kirk. A good matchup right there. A couple of players from the state of Texas. How about, I'll tell you what, Brian Davis is strong when he gets that thing down in there. He has four points. Well, he's a blue collar. He's an energy guy. Got his way into the starting line in early January. In fact, he started 10 straight games for the Aggies. 
Arthur working hard on the baseline and he made it. Let's watch Chalmers finish the break with Russell Robinson. We've got time out and time to do it. We'll be right back after you watch this from your friends at Phillips 66. Fifteen fifty left in the first half. Nine five A and M in front of KU by four in the early going. This ESPN Plus game brought to you by Chick Fil A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Take a look at some of the headlines now from the Big Twelve Conference in the season. Colorado got the first win ever by a number twelve seed in tournament history in the opening round. A&M had only one win in the previous 11 tournaments coming into here, and they got two in this one already. Michael Beasley, the Big 12 Player of the Year. And Fred, when you look at the history of this conference, those three schools really ever didn't do much in the tournament year in and year out, so maybe we've got a little bit of a changing of power in this conference. Derek Golden with a tough shot down inside. Well, I got a question, and not to change sports here, but thinking of all the tradition at Kansas and A&M trying to build basketball tradition, when you run into all that, you ran into that great Yankee tradition as, as a Royal, and you caught them and you beat them, but it's there in front of you, isn't it? Well, it is there, and it's something that one of the hurdles you've got to get over, and when this league expanded in the 97 season, it really forced the Texas teams to step up in basketball, kind of like it's doing in football, forcing the North teams to get even with the with the Texas teams and the Oklahoma teams in, in football. But in basketball, the powers were up here in the North, and the schools like Baylor and Texas Tech, Texas was having a strong program, but Texas A&M certainly one of the bottom feeders in this league. And you look at those schools right now, they've all stepped up their programs. Sasha Khan on the line. A little strong with that try. Great save by Darnell Jackson. Slapped it out. Collins deep side rush, and he got it at three. Offensive rebounding will be a key. Texas A&M had an advantage early in the ball game. Kansas with an offensive board right there on the missed free throw. Able to convert it into a three-point conversion. Dominique Kirk. Oh, boy, hitting the floor hard is Darnell Jackson. I think he banged his, his elbow hard on the floor, but he's up okay. Kind of hard to hurt him. He's a big, tough guy. And playing well in his senior campaign. Started out early playing well. Came off the Kansas bench early in the season. He worked his way into the starting lineup in late November. Hadn't worked his way out of it yet. One of the most improved players in the conference this year, now the senior. DeAndre Jordan, their seven foot freshman, is on the floor. He's been battling a flu like virus, and now we have a foul call here. Golf fans and club pros, not too early to start thinking about the 2008 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Log on to ESPNGolf.com to sign up your course as a host or to find a local qualifying site in your area. Be a part of the search for America's best twosome. Well, Carter coming out of the ball game. Donald Sloan leaves. Fred played 35 minutes here last night. His play at point guard is absolutely crucial for Texas A&M. Andre Jordan in the ball game. Just a handful of minutes for him here last night. He's still trying to fight his way back from the flu. Well, he is long, seven feet tall, with long arms and a shot missing down inside from Joseph Jones. And here come the Jayhawks on the move. Chalmers, Khan, Collins. Offensively, job one for the Jayhawks is play fast, push the tempo, try to get in a transition game. And Collins, nobody any quicker in the Jayhawks roster than Sharon Collins. 15 to shoot for KU. Chalmers, rush. Here they go, down inside. Darnell Jackson trying to pull his way in, and he's fouled. The Jayhawks are not a big team, but they are a strong team. Well, they're also giving Darnell Jackson a lot of room to work. Great, great spacing by the Jayhawks. No opportunity for a double down and a double team for Texas A&M. They're going to let their post players go one-on-one -on -one against Darnell Jackson. He's won most of those battles all season long. DeAndre Jordan right back out of the lineup again. So you have to wonder how he's feeling, or is that just a coaching thing right now? That's two personal fouls right there, so he wasn't on the floor very long before he got whistled for the two fouls. 
this ball game could come down to the depth on the benches. And certainly you would appear, at least on paper coming in, that would favor the Jayhawks. But let's see how it plays out. Well, we talked about KU last night. They bring people off the bench. They don't lose much, if anything, do they? Really don't. They're they are deep. In fact, a lot of people think they have eight starters on their roster. Guys that would, at least eight of them would start for some other schools. Joseph Jones buried the shot, the two. Jackson down the lane he comes with a little floater and he got it down. That's a soft shot for a big man who was coming down here with a purpose. Well he's improved his shooting range so much you really need to step up and challenge him when he's at the free throw line. You can't let him get to within a step of the basket before you even try to slow him down, flatten him out, make him go side to side. That was poor defensive recognition by AM right there. Jones set a screen on Collins, they had a little pick and roll, they got it back to Jones, nothing there. Now they dump it to the baseline. Brian Davis with a spin move and he was fouled by Darnell Jackson. Well, Darnell Jackson is a key for Kansas. We've seen him operate on the low blocks. Can step out and shoot the three. Look at that. Nobody steps up because of the number situation. They're sagging off on Sasha Khan inside, but Texas A&M needs to plug up that middle a little bit. We can't let those two guys run through. Davis with the miss. Let's take a look now at our Big 12 leaders brought to you by Chevy and your local Chevy dealers. Mario Chalmers leading the league in steals. Russell Robinson, his teammate, right there with him. And Chalmers just comes out of the game. Short with the try and the rebound battle finally won by KU. It looked like a volleyball game for him. And there's good quickness on the part of Sharon Collins to get that ball as it was knocked loose. Both teams playing man to man the entire first half, at least to this point. Kansas guards will work that weave, look to dribble a drive or to dump that ball inside. Ryan Davis and Darrell Arthur tangle, and Darrell Arthur picks up his first foul. Ryan Davis gets a little competitive, doesn't he? Well, he is an outstanding player. You talk about size and strength, 6'9", 250, still just a sophomore. Just forced his way not only into their starting lineup, but picking up big minutes. He plays better than 22 minutes per game. Sloan back into the lineup. He didn't get much of a breather his first time to the bench. Cole Aldrich is in the game for KU, and boy, he's long. He's He's trying to come out and help on defense. He covers some ground in his stance. And there he is with the double team in the trap, but good recognition by the egg. Deep try in the corner from Eric Rowland. No, but Joseph Jones saves it with the offensive board. Mark Turgeon saying before the game, or after the ball game last night, having played Kansas within the week, gives them an idea of what they're up against. He thinks that will help them, but he knows they need to play better than they did on their home floor last Saturday night. How about Joseph Jones nailing a three from way out front? He six has five. Six of 18 from three-point land so far through the course of the season. Out of more of his inside score and a strong rebounder. Averages better than five boards per game. Bill Mielbach set to check in now for the Aggies. A long lob to Aldridge and a really soft touch to lay it up and in. Cole Aldridge was up and out on the near sideline with a little pick and roll. Pass came from the other side. Throw it just outside the rim, almost from that angle to the corner of the backboard with the wing player slashing into the basket. Make the grab and then finish at the rim. Collins on defense. Sloan tried to take him, now Davis. Without that help defense, Sloan had a clear route to the basket right there. He had beaten Collins at the first step out front, just beat him again. Huh. Finish it, Brandon, take it on in. Boy, they can get out and run, can't they? And every once in a while, Brandon Rush simply does something that just makes you want to go, oh, wow. <laughs> Lights up your eyes, and you can see what the pro scouts see from he's, Brandon Rush. He's got the arena going wow right now. The KU fans are standing and roaring. This is a key possession for Texas A&M because of what just happened. The electricity that that fast break and slam dunk creates in Sprint Center. All the Kansas fans on hand. So right now, A&M playing on the opponent's floor. Three-point try, no. Cole Aldrich with the board. A&M needs to have a strong defensive stand right now. First, see if they can slow it. Kansas down to where they have a long possession and get a stop. Uh, Good Sasha Khan. I'll tell you what, Sasha Khan comes off the bench. He can play the game. Well, he was a starter all last year, a starter early on this year. Mark Turgeon wants to talk about it. Jayhawks on quite a roll right now. 
19-16, Kansas 10-33 left in our first half. 18,000 on their feet and roaring for the Jayhawks here. Let's take a look at Sasha Khan. Boy, well, Kansas getting some balance right now. They have so many offensive weapons. Seven different players have led them in scoring one time or another this year, including Sasha Khan. He has the post moves of some of the others like a Darnell Jackson. But Kansas uses their defense to pick up steals immediately in an attack mode. And all their guys can get out and run the floor like this. But not many of them can elevate like Brandon Rush. How about the angle that pass, Paul? He threw it right over Joseph Jones' shoulder. A great lead pass right there. They've got the knowledge of playing together. Got off to a slow start last year, but Kansas playing with juniors and seniors for the first time in several years, and they are playing like veterans right now. Kansas now has hit seven out of 12 shots on the floor. A&M six out of 12, but Kansas has grabbed the momentum in this. Kansas Jayhawks on the season 29 and three, tied for first in the regular season. But the numbers just keep coming up, looking great for KU. I mentioned Bill Self has won a list 23 every year for the last 10 years. 341 and 132 overall. His winning percentage is right up there with the best that has ever coached at Kansas. You all know what KU's done since the Big 12 was formed in a regular season? How about 158 and 34? How's that? Mule back into the ball game for Texas and m Key player for them here last night. Tipped out of bounds by Kansas. We're going to get a break here with 10 minutes, 17 left in our first half. KU by three over a and Kansas on top, 19 to 16. AM got out quickly in this one. The Jayhawks have caught him and taken the lead. And during the last media timeout, a special presentation to my partner by Tim Kansas Allen, the radio voice associate Kansas commissioner State of Athletics. the Big 12 and Conference, a presentation to my partner. The World Games in 1979 for a fledgling network called ESPN. This week, Fred informed the producers at ESPN and the staff of the Big 12 Conference of his desire to retire from the conference telecast package at the end of this season. Fred has provided play-by-play -play coverage of Final Fours, World Series, and hundreds of Big 8 and Big 12 games over the years. Fred is seated at midcourt and is working today's game for ESPN Regional Television. As a small token of our appreciation, Big 12 Senior Associate Commissioner Tim Allen will present... Just How big is that lump in your throat? Wow. <laughs> hey, honor well served. Wow. And when you see... Those kinds of things, it makes you appreciate where you've been, what you've done. KU, Robinson, Collins. Collins again. You know what's amazing about that, Paul? When I first started this, I was doing K-State games. KU folks didn't like me. I saw a lot of crimson <laughs> and blue people up there. Uh, don't worry, they still don't like you. <laughs> they just knew something was happening they were supposed to applaud. They just let you work at Allen Fieldhouse every once in a while now. Yeah, they did. They've been wonderful. All the fans have. Well, college basketball has been a nice trade-off. It's been great for you, and you've been great for it. Shot clock didn't start that time. Had a little problem with the clocks here last night. Officials told us they're having a little problem with the insert clock on the monitor that they see when they go over to the scorer's table. This is what they are seeing as they check the monitor over at the scorer's table. <laughs> Scott Thornton, the, the official standing there laughing. <laughs> Don't worry, he's got it okay. He'll be at Fort Myers Beach this time tomorrow, Scott. Don't worry about him at all. <laughs> well, I will be. You're right. And you know how good that is. They're rolling the tape over there for the officials to check. Where the shot clock should be. They've had some problems this last couple of days in here. Been a lot of basketball in downtown Kansas City, right down the street at Municipal Auditorium, the Women's Big 12 Championship Series. Mark Turgeon, an opportunity to call his club together right here. He will use this as a timeout, and hey, why not? You know, this is going to turn into a possession ball game where it's going to be critical coming down the stretch. That's if you play well throughout the afternoon, and I think folks coaches anticipating that right now. What we've seen in the first 10 minutes of this ballgame would indicate a close game the rest of the day. This has got to be tough to stop and start basketball. You get used to getting in that rhythm, getting going up and down the floor, and these unexpected stops are 
not easy for anybody, and, and especially tough, I think, on, on the coaches and players, but the officials, too. Well, they the officials, have to stop and do this. Officials really need to get it right, and I thought it was one of the things that really impacted the game that we had last night with Texas A&M and Kansas State. I think both teams got a little flat throughout the course of the game. Tough to get a rhythm and a tempo going to where you really get on a, on a groove to where everything's working to where you get put together a run. And I think the clock problems they had kind of slowed down uh, both teams, and I think it also took some of the crowd out of the game. That should be a good thing for Texas A&M right now, the way the KU people have been lit up. Yeah, I've known you for a long time. You've always known I was dumb. But when Tim Allen walked up here, I couldn't imagine what he was coming over here for. <laughs> I knew what he was here for, i got to tell you. <laughs> You're probably part of but it. But if I'd have told you that, then you'd have known everything I did. I don't want that. <laughs> no, I don't either. <laughs> Never have. Why start now? And since we're stopped here, I want to tell you thanks for everything, too. What a buddy you've been for. Since 1973, when you were really good on the mound for great teams, and you've been great at this, too. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, they'll replace you as a broadcaster, but they won't replace you as a travel partner and a friend for me. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> we can travel well. <laughs> Larry Conley trained you well. He did. <laughs> Talked to him yesterday. He's down to the Southeastern Conference room. Oh, you talk about towns. problems. Wow. Oh, boy. Now we're back to action. Kirk. Carter. Six on that shot clock. And a long cry from Carter won't go. Look at Darnell Jackson hustle down the rebound. Look at Collins push it off the wind. Chalmers and down inside to Cole Aldridge. What a finish. Cole Aldridge giving a little flash of what he is about. He has patiently worked in practice, backed up the people that are in front of him in the front line. He'll pick up big time minutes for the Jayhawks next year. And right now, the way he's playing over the last few weeks, he sure looks like he'll be ready. And just by the way, not to dwell on this subject, but I was dumbfounded when Tam Allen walked over. He didn't know what to do. So his daughter, Alexis, just reached over and ripped my headset off. How about that? The Allens are in charge here this weekend. He's been running the tournament for a number of years. 21-18. Kansas, when they play well, they always get the good ball movement. Everybody knows where to go on the floor. Their bigs always run the middle of the floor. Their wing players and guards fan out on the perimeter. KU with the basketball, leading by three. 8-49 left in our first half. Chalmers, Robinson, great block by Aldrich. What a finish. Half a dozen for Cole Aldrich. Sideline pick and roll that Kansas loves to play. They go pick and roll, or they slip that pick. That time it's a highlight reel finish. Okay, you up by six, by five. That's the biggest lead of the game so far. And then trying to fight off the pressure, not only of KU, but an arena full of crimson and blue KU fans. Premier players really working hard to keep that defensive pressure off of them to make sure they take care of the basketball. How about that to finish inside that by Ilanu? Chamalu Ilanu with an answer for some of KU's. Another one, another one of those young players, AM, while they've got some veterans in their front line, they've got some good ones coming back. They'll be as big and as strong next year as they are this season. Gerard Collins with a miss and Ilanu with a strong rebound. And now taken away by Mario Chalmers. He's triple teamed in there, kicks it back outside, and KU will start a position. Chalmers, though, is going to take the drive, reverse layup, no. And Aldridge there fighting for the rebound. Darnell Jackson was there, and we've got a foul call. Great inside play, both teams. You talk about players coming back. Aldrich with the finish here as a freshman. Other end of the floor, Alanu. He's in there with the rebound. He's only a sophomore. At Michelin, our tires are rigorously tested. They're laser checked, x-rayed for structural integrity. And finally, no tire leaves the factory without a thorough hand inspection. the scene outside Sprint Center. The Kansas City Power and Light District is all being built right now. Lots of bars, lots of restaurants, college basketball experience right next door to Sprint Center. 
There's a lot to do in this part of Kansas City, downtown being revitalized. We are at the Big 12 Championships, along with Paul Splitter. I'm Fred White. And let's see what the bracket looks like here. Texas is in the championship game, the number one seed. Kansas and A&M battling now to see who gets there to play tomorrow. Paul, I gotta say, an observation, A&M, they've taken some shots in this game, and they're right there. They're only down three. Absolutely, they're right there. I think people were surprised when they were not right there early on in the season when they finished league play at an even 500 record. That was the surprise. What we're seeing here this afternoon is not the surprise. Darnell Jackson trying to get it off the glass and missed. But Sloan's hobbling a little bit as he crosses the center line with a basketball. So many of the players taped ankles, taped wrists, fingers. It's that time of year where you have to play through injuries. The only things that are going to get guys feeling well is about four or five weeks off. Sloan airballed it just a little bit there. Let the Aggies keep the ball. Fred, you like to take a look at the field coming into this tournament. You picked one school that really needed to come in and play well in Kansas City, win one ball game, maybe win two games. Has done that. Texas A&M. I think they called the dance card. I would think they would have had to. You know, the one thing a blemish against them would be the eight and eight record, and it's tough to get conference schools in with the 500 record. But remember, this conference either one or two in the RPI. The RPI shows great depth and balance. Hurts every school every weekend until you get to tomorrow, Selection Sunday, and all of a sudden that RPI is of real value. Got a problem with shot clock again. Game clock shows 6:59 on left turn, left and a half. We knew when the game started it was off a little bit. Now they changed the shot clock from 35 to 22. It's just tough on everybody when the clock continually has problems. You have to keep stopping the game. Phillips 66 is proud to be the presenting sponsor of Big 12 basketball. Next time you're on empty, fill up with Phillips 66 gasoline. Specially formulated to clean fuel injectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. Phillips 66, hard working gas. All right, we're going to try it again here. 21 on the shot clock now, 6.59 left in the first half. KU up by three, Aggie basketball. Kansas continues to play the man to man. The only question is how much trapping pressure, how much one on one pressure do you get? They can pressure you one on one because all their perimeter players are solid defenders. Turnover, they call it palming the basketball, a call you don't see very much anymore. That's that pressure defense right there, forces the guard to do something he doesn't normally do, trying to be a little quicker out front because of the pressure defensively from Sharon Collins. Six turnovers charged the Aggies. KU's been guilty of only two. I mentioned AM trying to build tradition in basketball. Billy Gillespie really jump started that program. He's at Kentucky now. They got knocked out in the Southeast today. And what a strong rebound by Alanu again. Well, you saw what the program was early. And you see what it's been the last couple of years and how Reed Arena has changed the atmosphere there. But now Mark Turgeon trying to keep that tradition alive after coming out of all the KU tradition. There's Joseph Jones down low. Jump hook won't go. Con great defense. Look at Alanu in there. And Darnell Jackson got him from behind and fouled it. As well as Jackson is playing, Alanu beat him to that spot. 32, the Jackson, On the AM bench, Mark Turgeon, a Kansas graduate, Letterman over there, played on a lot of championship teams. He was a guard there for three years, an assistant coach. Well, he's been hooked up with Roy Williams, Larry Brown. You talk about a basketball pedigree. Well, he's got a good staff to go along with him. Scott Spinelli, an associate head coach in his first year, an outstanding recruiter. He brings Alvin Poo Williamson with him his first year. He comes from Wichita State. So guys that he has known for a while, he's comfortable with all of them. Not only a solid young head coach, but a great staff supporting him. Chinamalu Ilanu on the line, a 6'10 sophomore from Houston. And in case you're wondering, yeah, I really like to say Chinamalu. <laughs> Practice, so you got to practice it out loud. It's yeah, not an easy one. Yeah, what was I telling you taught me about in Iowa last week? Oldabolt? Oldabolt, yeah. You hadn't heard of Oldabolt Arthur High School. I was ready for it, though. Okay, you're getting a shot up quickly that won't fall, and here come the Aggies down by just two. Smaller Slow Kansas guard. Hobbling. Yes, he is. He's got the bad ankle. Been bothering the last three weeks. Kansas guards that are smaller all shoot that little runner. We had a three-second violation. When's the last time you saw that? KU gets the ball back. Leading by two. 
Athletes playing through pain. I guess the adrenaline gets going and the game gets going. And well, you look at the training rooms and even out on the benches after the game, how many ice packs do you see on knees, ankles, shoulders, wrists? Whistle blowing as Chalmers started the drive off the wing. This ESPN Plus game is brought to you by Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Especially when you get a cow involved in the thing. DeAndre Jones, that's his third foul. The young man's not feeling very well. Plus, he's having foul problems. The seventh foot freshman, number 22. Mention he's from Houston, too. 16 players from Texas on this Aggie roster. And you look around, all those Texas schools, there are a lot of great players coming out of Texas high school. Brandon Rush nailed a three from the corner. He has eight points. Bill Self encouraged him early in the conference season. Need to have you more aggressive offensively. There were times he might go through a ball game with seven or eight shots in a game, and Bill Self says we can't get to where we want to go late in the season with him getting just that many touches and looks. Jordan foul. Well, he is seven feet tall, and he is really long. On top of that. Texas A&M get hung up in their man-to-man -man defensive pressure. Sasha Khan with a big-time pick in there just wiped out everybody on that left side of the floor, leaving Brandon Rush wide open in the corner. Jordan has been ill, plus he'd scored only nine points in his last two regular season games. Free throw good. His first point of this contest. Fred, you look at him and you can see the offensive skills that he possesses. He's a terrific athlete. He runs the floor. He's a great jumper, but he's still wrong. When you take a look at basketball development overall, got a lot of growing, a lot of to do. Like he's got a lot of strength, a lot of experience. Okay, what he did do in the first conference game this year, he threw down the dog on this dunk <laughs> I've ever seen. Khan with a spinning left hand that won't fall, but he draws a foul. Thing that Sasha Khan has done for Kansas, and we talk about his aggressiveness and how he is playing. He's playing faster when he gets the basketball. More confidence on the offensive end. It used to be when he gets the basketball, he can kind of think about making a move, think about making a pass. Now he gets the basketball. He is on the move. He's got some spin moves both ways, and he's improved from the free throw line as well. In fact, Kansas is a team. Free throws were a big time problem for them last year, but they shot it about a 76% clip. In conference play, he's as good as anybody's going to do. Sasa County, young man from Russia. Now, family lives in Melbourne, Florida. He attended the Florida Air Academy. What do they teach at the Air Academy? I've got a move. Largest lead for KU now. They've got it up to six points. And all, what that tells you is that AMM is hanging into this thing. That's what AM wants to do. Of course, they got wiped out on their home floor last week by these Jayhawks. They'll play it on a neutral floor. Learn from last week. Now you got to go the full 40 minutes. And now it's going to go back to KU. When you wonder if Brian Davis came close to getting a technical foul right there, got called with the travel and flipped the ball up in the air right in front of the official Scott Thornley, the veteran official. We could have hung a tee on him for that, but Thornley, the veteran right there, he knows that Mark Turgeon will take care of that. He's got a young player, needs to learn as he goes along here. No chance in a big ball game like this, penalizing Texas A&M. Well, he's an emotional kid. I mentioned it a couple of nights ago. Well, Arthur missed the turnaround right there to stick it back is Russell Robinson. That's his first two points of the day, and a timeout taken by AM with 4.30 left in the half. Mark Turgeon trying to keep this thing close. His club has just gone down by eight, and that is the biggest lead of the game. ESPN bracketologist Joe Lenardi has told us where he thinks the Big 12 teams are going to be seated in the tournament. And count the numbers, you see six up there from the Big 12. And you see the seeds. He's got KU and Texas as number two, so Oklahoma at seven, AM and eight, Kansas State at nine, and Baylor in as an 11. Everybody very comfortable coming in with Kansas and Texas. Oklahoma had a terrific RBI because our RPI because of their preseason schedule had three great wins after a Stephen F. Austin lost. Other three schools maybe a little bit concerned coming in. Baylor certainly concerned. Colorado played well the first time around. Certainly that hurts uh, the conference right there. But 
I think guys overall have played well enough this weekend to assure that spot in the big games. Tomorrow selection Sunday, always a nervous time for those some of those college teams. Some of them know they're in, there's no doubt about it. There are always surprises. Well, the two teams that play here tomorrow afternoon are going to stay here at Sprint Center. They've got a reception room where they can just have their own little watch party, their team party after the championship game here tomorrow afternoon. You know, they got a lot at the Sprint Center. Oh, that won't count. Sasha Khan caught the pass, tipped it, and I think it went up through the net from the bottom. And that, you can't do it that way. Well, Darrell <laughs> Arthur, they went with the high low right there. Arthur, you have to respect his shot ability inside that circle. Sasha Khan likes to work inside. This pass a little bit too high and a little bit too hard. A deflection shot. Can't take it from underneath. Back up through and bring it back in. You got to start it at the top. Got to come over the rim. <laughs> you got to get gravity involved in there somehow. by six 347 left in our first half Joseph Jones I'll tell you what he's struggled a little bit late in the season but he's played pretty well here in this championship games he was one of the first real strong recruits that Texas A&M brought in it's good to see him playing well this weekend seems to have a little extra bounce in his step that we haven't seen the last few weeks well he does but six nine senior he's from Norman G Texas Arthur turnaround jumper nice and soft got it down his first field goal. Darrell Arthur really worked on his game this past offseason. Added to his range. Still not a three-point shooter though, like they'd like to see him at some point in time. He's added some offensive moves. A uh, steal of Mario Chalmers. Nice and soft over the rim. I'm telling you, you want to initiate the offense on the opposite side of the floor for Mario Chalmers. <laughs> He'll break it down on that entry pass. He's kind of limping now as they come back up for Chalmers starting to limp. Dominique Kirk. Joseph Jones put it on the floor. That's Brian Davis, excuse me. And a foul. KU fans don't like it. 247 left in first half. KU's up by eight. And we've got a break. We'll be back after this from your friends at Phillips 66. Watch Chalmers go boom. Mocha Java Chiller is great. Yeah, this caramel Mocha Java Chiller is really mm. good. This is a perfect frozen treat. It's actually just coffee. No, frozen treat. Coffee. Can I, I'd like to have the last word. Then go ahead. Coffee drink. It really is a coffee drink, Brian. Again, I'd like to have the last thing that's said. But I was said. agreeing with I know, but I want to have the last thing that's said. This is good. Mm-hmm. Java Chillers at Sonic. A shot of premium roast espresso blended into an indulgent frozen treat of your favorite flavors. And stop in for happy hour. half price fountain drinks and slushes every day from 2 to 4 p.m. Welcome back to Kansas City. The Jayhawks enjoying their biggest lead at 34-26 here at Studio 66. Doug Bell alongside Stacey King. I think the Aggies, though, are playing tough, out-rebounding Kansas. They're doing what they want to do right now. Well, they're hitting the backboards, and Joseph Jones is having a great first half. Kansas got 22 points in the paint. Texas A&M has to shore that up. On that last breakaway, Mario Chalmers uh, tweaked his knee a bit, split. It appears he was limping as he uh, left the floor on that breakaway layup. Did you notice anything? Absolutely. He was limping. In fact, they're taking him to the locker room early, so he's out of the lineup right now. That's something we will want to monitor in the second half. Now, not needed so much for his scoring potential, but his defensive play is as good as anybody in the league. Everybody plays with the bumps and bruises. You wonder if he'll be back. Chalmers so good at anticipating that entry pass steps in front of the offensive player quickly to the other end of the floor. And that's what he does. Beat Derek Rowland to that entry pass. Looks like he might have hurt the ankle on the landing there. You know what you can't quantify? Without scoring, how much is how many points does he worth to his team during a game? A bunch. Let me just take a look at his steals total. Oh, 70 steals this year. Travel call. That's the one thing about Kansas. You can use, lose a player with the quality of a Mario Chalmers, and they just bring in somebody else on the perimeter. The three perimeter players they have right now, their regular point guard, Russell Robinson, Sharon Collins, and Brandon Rush. They really don't, don't lose a thing. And Chalmers already back out to the KU bench. Still limping. Still back with his teammates. We're seeing just walking down the bench there, getting ready to sit down. Joseph Jones knocks down a jump shot. And boy, the Aggies right there. They are hanging in. Just five points for him last night. Six strong rebounds. Played just 25 minutes because he was in some foul trouble. Because minutes held down last night in the foul problem. He might come back a little stronger here this afternoon. Rush. Sasha Khan. Didn't get it. Cole Aldridge can't get it. It's out of bounds and belongs to AM. They say that KU hit a last. 
So the Aggies down five, two minutes and a second left in the first half. Again, 201 left in our first half all season long. Champion Apparel has been showcasing the traditions and history of the members of the Big 12 Conference. The 2007 Big 12 Championship was held in Oklahoma City. And in that tournament, Texas player Kevin Durant put 92 points on the scoreboard in three games. But in the championship game, wasn't quite enough. Kansas beats Texas 88-84. Champion, it's how you play. Most points in a game, Marcus Pfizer of Iowa State, 38. Kevin Durant had 37. And Marcus Pfizer had a lot of big games. Well, he was a bull out of Louisiana. He was one of the real strong power forwards in this conference. His years at Iowa State, Kevin Durant, more of a perimeter player. Kevin Durant, both those players, kind of players that could just put their team on their shoulders and say, hey, just follow me, boys. We'll take this one on home. I know you remember the shot he made in Allen Fieldhouse, a game that we did that won a game for Iowa State. Iowa State was a real thorn in the side for the Kansas Jayhawks during those years. Not just up in Ames, but also a problem for KU at Allen Fieldhouse. Dominique Kirk nails a three, his second one. Got to get some balanced scoring out on the perimeter. Dominic Kirk has been playing well recently, scored well last night at five of six threes, doing it again today. Josh Carter needs to step up as well. Sasha Khan missed, strong rebound. That was Brian Davis and AM on a 6 0 run, and they've got the ball right now. That's great front line play by Texas AM right there because Sasha Khan is at 6 11. They've got the first year player, Cole Aldridge, also 6 11. That's about as big as it gets at the college level across the front line, and AM still able to cover their defensive glass. Kirk couldn't pull the trigger on that one. Now Jones. Kirk, little alert play right there, passing it out of the double team. So Dominic Kirk finding some range now, and when he gets a rolling, he can really get a rolling. He really, really hurt Kansas State last night, and now it's a 34-34 tie. Two hot hands on the same side of the floor for Texas A&M. Dominic Kirk, Joseph Jones, they feed off of each other. Aldridge blocked, and the ball belongs to A&M off the possession arrow. And they're really having some strong possessions. Last two defensive stands, defensive rebound against the big front line. They get points from Dominic Kirk on the offensive end. Now stuff a shot on the defensive end. So another stop for AM. They're working their way right back into this one. We're even at 34 all. First time since it was 13 all. 33 seconds left in a half, and the Aggies with a chance to go in at halftime with the lead. There's an eight-second differential in the shot clock and the game clock. You always look at a half and how do you close? And one of the questions was, well, if Kansas closed strong, it would really put a hurting on Texas A&M, but it was Texas A&M playing some catch up. Now you're down to what probably going to be your final possession. Three to shoot it. Dominique Kirk from way outside off the front of the rim. Joseph Jones gets it back. And he was on the strike. So it'll be KU basketball coming up on the O'Reilly Auto Parts halftime report from Studio 66. There's a special presentation, some ACC thrillers today, and analysis of this first half. And Mark Turgeon goes with a defensive set right now, brings Roland off the bench. He brings Alanu in to set up strong defensively for a and Sharon Collins down the lane. Didn't get it. Cole Aldridge got a hand on it. The half comes to an end. And Mark Turgic comes flying off the bench, pumping a fist. He loves what his ball club could accomplish and did accomplish in the first half. They are dead even with KU at 34-34. We are at halftime. Again, 34-34 A&M in Kansas. When we come back, we're going to take you to Studio 66 with Doug and Stacy. Center game two of the semifinal round dead even. AM and Kansas tied at 34 all. 
And Paul just sitting here looking at the ball game. If you weren't looking at the scoreboard, it looks like Kansas is winning. AM has taken some shots. I mean, punches in this ball game, but they're right there. All right, you take a look at what they did the last two minutes of that first half where they come down on the scoreboard to tie the game up. And you look at the stat sheet and you see them have a 10 rebound advantage over Kansas. They made a statement late in that first half. They did. They are physical, they are tough, and they are right there at halftime. And let's take a look at the Shelter Insurance first half highlight. Well, you knew Dominique Kirk was going to have to play well today to give AM much of a chance. He hit a couple threes, has eight points in the first half. Brian Davis, seven points, eight boards. He is kind of one of the reasons that AM has that rebound advantage over Kansas. Kansas got some help from Cole Alder. Strong in the last minutes of that first half. Kansas with the 13 field goals, 10 assists. That's not unusual for them. And not unusual to see Brandon Rush hop from the corner. He buried a couple threes in that first half. Shelter insurance for your auto, home, and life. Seek shelter today. Well, we know where we are. 34-34. How'd we get there? Joseph Jones pacing the Aggies with 11 points. Dominique Kirk has eight. And the Aggies have 10 second chance points. Kansas, Brandon Rush, leading scorer. Really tough to change a whole lot if you're Texas A&M because of the balance that Kansas has. They played eight in the first half. Seven different players scored. Those coaches know the M.O. of their opponent. They know what they do. So the, this time of the year, they're on a whole lot of surprises you can pull for the second half of the game. Russell Robinson missed it. Arthur took it back up and in. Five points for Arthur, and the Jayhawks score first in the second half. Shot comes from deep and comes off soft on the same shot side of the floor that the shot came up from. Doesn't happen all that often. Arthur ended up in the right position. Dominique Kirk, oh, what a shooter he is. He buried two threes in the first half at eight points. He's a 41% three-point shooter. Russell and Robinson's going to get the first shot of trying to cover him here in the second half for Kansas. He really hurt K-State last night, didn't he? Working against Arnell Jackson, kicks it out. Both you have long try. He got knocked down on a three-point shot. And that's Mario Chalmers. Remember, he was limping late in the first half. In the first half on the Kansas bench. He starts here in the second half. Still limping a little bit, too. Let's go back and check on our star watch. An update. Dominique Kirk now has eight points. Darnell Jackson with a half dozen. They each have two rebounds. Bo Muehlbach, who comes from a football family. Looks like he could play a little football, doesn't he? Take a look at him. If he didn't play football, he's missing a good chance. Boy, 6'5", senior from Lufkin, Texas. Transferred from Arizona. Got two of the three. And the extra one coming. How about those shoes he's wearing? It's with kind of a lavender tone to them. Featuring the Adidas shoes. They don't have the Chucks. They still got those? I have no idea. <laughs> I think the Rockers are wearing those. <laughs> Down inside, the ball knocked away out of bounds. It'll stay with KU. 26 seconds left on the shot clock. Kansas opened the ball game trying to power the ball inside. That's the way they're open in the second half. Darrell Arthur working the low blocks. I don't say I've been around a while, but I thought it was pretty darn exciting in high school when we got white Chuck Taylor's. But that was pretty fancy. Now we got a foul call. That happened with 14 seconds on the shot clock. This ESPN Plus game is brought to you by Whataburger, just like you like it. By this time last night, Texas A&M was already in some foul trouble. That was pretty well distributed throughout their roster. Nobody in big trouble right now. Arnell Jackson off the front of the rim. 6'8", senior, Oklahoma City's Midwest City High School. Pretty good free throw shooter, too. He's a 71% shooter. It came up short on that one, and that one got rim but goes down. 37 all tie. There have been some good games in this tournament. Guard play has been outstanding for Texas A&M here this afternoon. This is the stage of the ball game last night. The Kansas turned it around against Nebraska. Up the tempo of their defense, the defensive pressure. Got some steals early in the second half. See if A&M can fight them off here. Early stages in the second stanza today. What a long try by Josh Carter. He's hit the deck, but nothing called. And Muehlbach saves the long rebound. The Aggies get a new possession and a new shot clock. Josh Carter now 0 for 4 from deep here this afternoon. A&M would love to get him off the snipe. 
How about the Aggies showing the patience they're showing and the discipline they're showing on offense here? Mark Hurgeon knew how he wanted to attack the Jayhawks and his club executing it right now. Ryan Davis turn around shot knocked it down. If you took a look at these two teams for the first time here this afternoon someone told you one of them is 500 team the other one was uh, up at the top of the league you wouldn't be able to tell the difference and go back down holding his right leg. Kid. He's going to have to play through some pain right now. Well, he's holding his knee or his ankle. They're going to help him to his feet. He is, oh, he's really in some pain. You know, the trainer and the coach really don't want to come out on the floor as soon as they do. It means he's going to have to leave the floor. But the way you see it moving around right now, he's going to have to leave anyhow. Banged knees with Rell Arthur on that drive to the basket. Excruciating pain when you first do that. The Aggie trainer out to help him out. Matt Bowles, they're coming down at the end of the bench to take a look at him. He's hurt. Sometimes you bang that knee like that, it hurts like fire, but then you can get over it. Rush, oh, what a shot, he was fouled, and won. Brandon Rush said coming into this tournament, he didn't want any more finger rolls, he didn't want any more easy finishes. If he goes to the basket, he wants to finish at the rim, and he wants to finish with some authority. We saw him in transition with an open floor dunk in the first half. Strong move right there as he ran into a couple big shot blockers, able to get that shot down. Rush now has 11 points in this ball game, a 6'6 junior from here in Kansas City. Finished his high school career at Mount Zion Academy in North Carolina. Comes from a basketball family. His brothers could play, can play. And we'll tell you that the best rivalry for him was Missouri because another brother goes to MU. <laughs> They like to talk a little smack when they get together. And in trying to get movement, a little curl cut circle cuts with their ring players around the post players. Rush to Robinson, back to Rush. Puts it on the floor, got a look, jumpers up, jumpers in and out. Jackson, all oh, for the rebound. Darnell Jackson. That's the balance that Kansas features. Good scores on the perimeter, strong rebounders inside. Everybody active, everybody, everybody headed for the ball. Jay Hawks go in front by three. Long way to go, 16-35 left to play. Now the Kansas fans starting to roar again here in Sprint Center. Joseph Jones, Dominique Kirk. Spinning move down the baseline, tough shot, wouldn't go. Kansas has it. They're going to run. Sharon Collins, wing to Russell Robinson in front. Oh, Darrell Arthur had, a, had an itchy trigger finger, but didn't pull it. Now, Rush will, and got it. And I'm did a really Here nice job of getting back defensively. Kansas wanted to get something in transition, but they spread the floor, kept their spacing. Of course, Texas A&M defended from the inside out. Right now, Brandon Rush got a hot hand for KU. Kansas fans sense a run by the Jayhawks. There it comes. Sharon Collins got the deflection out on the run, and he got the bucket. And here come the Jayhawks. They have hit him with a shot, and they go back up by seven. A&M wants a timeout and gets it. That's what they're good at. Well, Kansas defense in the second half leading the way to the offensive end. Sharon Collins, one of the quickest on the floor here this afternoon. We're back at Sprint Center. Kansas has hit them with a burst. That's what they're really good at, Paul. Yeah, they really are on a 9-0 run right now. And during this 9-0 stretch, four different Jayhawks have scored different parts of the floor. Darnell Jackson with a stick back. Brandon Rush with a three-point. Sharon Collins in transition after a steal. They are balanced. They are deep. Really no weaknesses on this club. The big question coming in, how well will they play from day to day? We've got a timeout here. Sloan is limping off the floor. So much fun to watch Kansas when they get into one of these stretches. Mentioned the sequence. Darnell Jackson with the stick back. Brandon Rush, that's a two, but he got a three earlier in the half. And then in transition, Jerron Collins, one of the better defenders on the team, quickly to the other end. He's got the layup. Forces Mark Turgeon to get a timeout. Timeout here, 15.38 left in this one. And we'll be back after this from your friends at Phillips 66. Texas A&M 46-39 and Phillips 66. 
is proud to be presenting sponsor of Big 12 basketball. The next time you're on empty, fill up with Phillips 66 gasoline, specially formulated to clean fuel injectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. Phillips 66, hardworking gas. Donald Sloan on the bench for Texas A&M, out with that sore leg. Derek rolling into the game. Don't look for him to score a whole lot, but he's a terrific defender. A&M needs a full dose of that right now. Bo Mielbach went off with a bang up knee. Mario Chalmers of Kansas banged up. Shot missed, and Kansas had a little trouble, but they controlled the rebound. Now Robinson pushing it. Down to the corner to Collins, the shot off the front of the rim. B.J. Holmes on the floor now for A&M. Look at him go. Tried to get to the rim, and Arthur blocked it. Getting in the stage of the ball game where coaches want to get a little bit deeper on their bench. Anyhow, Kansas has played eight players so far. Texas A&M has played ten. B.J. Holmes, now the smallest player on the floor. And then he's a six-footer. Roland. Down low, Ilanu double team. Boy, Kansas came with a double team in a hurry. And every time the AM post players have got a double team this afternoon, they dri immediately dribble out of it, head for the corner. Derry rolling on the drive. Well, he's got a strong upper body. And he is going against Sharon Collins. Williams looks to be about the same size. Well, I'll tell you what, well, Brandon Rush gets the ball in that corner, and he's money. Kansas up by eight, their biggest lead. Long try from the corner for Derek Rowland. He shoots less than 30% from long range on the season. Big one right there. Still shoots quite a few from deep. Hadn't had a whole lot of success, but an important shot there. Well, you get to tournament time, you see how even these teams start playing one another, and you realize how good the Big 12 Conference is. And different styles in this conference should prepare all the teams for postseason play. Arthur a miss. Jack Fred is kind of getting to that time, the selection Sunday, where it comes down to matchups. How do you match up specifically against an opponent? Look at Chinamolo Ilana with the reverse layup. And we thought this might be a good matchup here this afternoon because of the size and the strength of the front line of Texas AM. Few teams match up against Kansas's front line, AM matching them up. Point for point here this afternoon. AM has won two games in this tournament. And bear in mind they're doing it without their seven foot freshman, DeAndre Jordan, who's been ill, played five minutes last night, played very sparingly today. Brandon Rush, floater up to Dar Darrell Arthur. It's off his fingertips out of bounds. Golf fans and club pros, it's not too early to start thinking about the 2008 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Log on to ESPNGolfTalk.com to sign up your course as a host or to find a local qualifying site in your area. But if you sign up like that, you won't get it. you got to go to ESPNGolfTalk.com very cleanly. Be a part of the search for America's Best Tucson. Kansas with three new players on the floor. Oh, Aldrich, Sasha Khan is out there along with Mario Chalmers. One new player on the floor for Texas A&M. That would be Brian Davis. So both coaches heading to the bench in that last break. We haven't mentioned in a while that Texas won the first semifinal game today. Now, Khan fouls Davis. Texas, the number one seed, getting by Oklahoma earlier today and doing it by 24 points. And now Kansas and AM battling for the other spot in the championship game tomorrow here. Texas, very impressive in that first ball game here this afternoon. Whichever one, these two teams come out and they have a handful tomorrow afternoon. Rebound battle, the ball flies out of bounds, awarded to KU. The Jayhawks get it back, leading by three with 12.48 left in this game. Mark Turgeon. Right hard the sideline, isn't he? He, he, is, well, he, he is knows, really working over there. He really knows he knows right now that his team has survived that 9-0 run that Kansas hung on them a few minutes ago. They're getting a little bit closer. Knows that they need play up intensity every time down the floor, especially on the defensive end. They took some blows in the first half and hung on. Came back to tie the 34. Turgeon again over there pumping a fist. He's a competitor, aren't they all? Played on two state championship teams at Hayden High School in Topeka. Played on championship games, teams at KU. And he had a really nice program going to Wichita State. 
after there was a big decision. In fact, he went to Larry Brown, his former coach, for some advice. You know, Wichita State, he was happy, he was comfortable there. And Larry Brown said to him, hey, did you get into this coaching business to be happy and comfortable? Did you look to see how far you could go and really catch on with a good program? Look at Collins. Look at Collins. Oh, Sharon Collins. I'll tell you what. If that had been a football, he was smelling the goal line, wasn't he? Well, he was headed for it. He knew where he wanted to get to, and he was going to get there in a big hurry. Can you imagine that kid comes off the bench for a college team? Well, how about he's been voted the best six man in the Big 12 Conference. Sasha Khan, his teammate, he is a terrific bench player. Hard to think that Khan's not the best guy off the bench on his team, but Collins does so many things. You're right. Now Khan with a foul. Well, Kansas with so much balance, so much depth, everybody on the floor can score the basketball. All their guards can handle it, and it's the defensive work of Kansas denying that entry pass, and Sharon Collins headed the other way. It's KU on top by five. We're at Sprint Center in Kansas City. They got a lot of nice stuff in here. You're looking at one of the concourses. Here at Sprint Center, Phillips gave the 66 Big 12 Championship, along with Paul Splitarf, I'm Fred White, Kansas and A&M, and a pretty good argument here right now. The Jayhawks lead by five as the Jayhawk drummer beats the drum. Joseph Jones has had a good tournament so far. He hasn't scored here in the second half. But it's been a good ball game. Six lead changes, eight ties so far in this one. I see some stitches in Dominique Kirk's cheek right there. It's been a physical three games for this AM team. Brian Davis got it down. Figure with a power conference like this, it's going to be like that. And starting next year, instead of starting the tournament on Thursday, they're going to back it up a day, go Wednesday, give those catch coaches an extra day in case the following week in the NCAA you happen to draw a bracket with a Thursday game. South Beach Conference guys, I think you think that was something. They blew the roof off our place last night. They've moved that tournament across to Alexander Coliseum on a Georgia Tech campus. And somebody's going to have to play two games in that thing today. They're going to get it finished up. Well, Arthur, nice soft turnaround jump shot. Going against Brian Davis, and you take a look at those two players and say, how many times will we see that over the next couple of years? Of course, Darrell Arthur was going to be a one and done guy, but hasn't worked out that way. Still an outstanding talent playing well for Kansas right there. That's a terrific matchup inside. Okay, well, so many kids are one and done, and some of them go on and they, they do okay, but so many of them leave, and it just doesn't work. Well, you are a professional athlete. You can appreciate how difficult it is and how much maturity it takes. Carter miss. Oh, what a stick back. Dominique Kirk. Where did he come from? Well, he came from way out on the wing. There are slashing players on the floor that love to get to the offensive glass. Well, if Collins and Ryan Davis go down at the other end and go down hard. Collins on a tough drive, run into a crowd. And he's a little slow getting up. Watch this. Shot coming from the near side. Look at Dominique Kirk right there in the middle. Ball hangs up for him. He goes up and gets it. Flips it off the glass. And then Darrell Arthur. Little spin move right there. A baby hook from in the lane. He gets that shot to go down. Jerron Collins going to the free throw line here. He got hammered. But he's tough. 5'11 sophomore from Chicago's Crane High School. Again, won the six man award now. Well, Joseph Jones holding his head as he goes out of the ball game, holding his left eye maybe. Says I'm okay, but I don't think he can be. John Collins, you talk about six man at AM last week. How about 13 points, seven assists? He just brings it every time he walks on the floor, doesn't he? Joseph Jones might have been poked in the eye the way it looks. I don't know. Do you imagine somebody getting poked in the eye in this game? <laughs> or the nose. Now, didn't want is. the water, didn't want the ice pack, just needs a moment or two to collect himself. He'd be right back in there. Mulebach banged up earlier in the game. Banged his knee. Got a chance to bang it again. Chalmers banged up. He's back. We have a moment here. We'd like to take a moment to thank our Big 12 corporate partner, Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Three fouls now on Sasha Khan. 
Both these teams have enough depth in their front line. They can withstand some foul problems to post players. 10-10 left to play in this one. 26 left on the shot clock. Kansas with the six-point lead. Boy, and A&M playing them tough. Kansas beat A&M by 17 in the last game of the regular season, March 8th. Now, Yobach got blocked. He took it in, and it's out of bounds. Belongs to A&M under their basket with 14 left on the shot clock. Yobach made a great move, got an outstanding pass that got him up underneath the basket, but he was right under the basket with some tall trees in there, had no shot. Carter won't go. And Troy Brian Davis almost stole the rebound, but it was stripped out of his hands. Now taken back by Muehlbach. Now they scrum <laughs> at midcourt. It's going to be Kansas ball on the held position. And now Darnell Jackson appears to be shaken up. But he's going to get up on his, under his own power. There's a timeout. And Mark Turgeon went out to get his kids away from there in a hurry. Time out with 9.46 left in our first half. Let's take a look now at our assist leaders brought to you by Cargill. Collaborate, create, and succeed. D.J. Augustine from Texas leading the conference from Chalmers and Russell Robinson. What a combination they are. Cookie Miller from Nebraska and Marcus Hall. Texas beat Oklahoma in the first semifinal game today. They got some power from A.J. Abrams. Well, that was a powerful team and a terrific performance here earlier this afternoon. Business-like performance. Terrific at the guard play. And as you get later into the season and into the postseason, guard play probably the most important aspect of the game. And who has a better tandem at the one and two positions than the Texas Longhorns? A.J. Abrams, 24 points this afternoon. Seven three-pointers, and he'll hit it from all over the floor. Longhorns getting some play, and they've really developed their front line down there over the course of the season. Huh? Yeah, they really didn't have much going on the front line early on this year, and Rick Barnes identified that and said, I think I'll be fine in the conference where I am, but to go where we can go with this team, I'm going to need more players playing well in that front line. Did a nice job of developing that underclass front line for Texas. Brandon Rush with his 18th point of the game puts Kansas up by eight. That the key player has the ball right now for Texas A&M. Josh Carter is 0 for 6 from long range. Texas A&M really needs to get something out of him the rest of the way today. Irano down low against Darnell Jackson. Fires a pass to Muehlbach to the corner. And that is Josh Carter, but he couldn't get it down. And he's still 0 for. Now 0 for 7. Collins. Dumps it into the corner. Mario Chalmers in and out. And here comes A&M. Dominique Kirk trying to thread his way through traffic. Wisely stopped and picked up the dribble. That the dribble, a, he was surrounded. That was a big defensive rebound for Olanu right there because Kansas had a couple players hanging around, ended up in the right spot, but Olanu able to gather it in and get it to one of the guards. Josh Carter. Maybe one of the reasons Carter's held down offensively today is the work of Brandon Rush defensively. Gotta have something to do with it. Only five to shoot now. Kirk, he's been hot. That one's too strong. That didn't get rimmed, did it? Nope. Nope. Now they throw it up there. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? That was a three that showed up. A gift from the Angels. That's an effort to just get something on the rim to get that shot clock turned off and you get three points. Hey, that's the shot of the tournament. Right there. Brandon Rush with an answer at the other end. Though. And that's exactly the way Kansas plays it. You think you've done something really good on your end of the floor, and they just come back and calmly throw in a three. Look again at the KU fans and listen to them here in Sprint Center. They are on their feet and roaring. You know, AM can get some energy from this crowd. Sure, in the back of their mind, they know they're Kansas fans, but hey, you're in an arena with a great atmosphere right now. You're in a ball game against one of the top teams in the nation, an opportunity to knock off a giant. And there's Josh Carter knocking down the three from the deep corner. That's his first hit from deep in this afternoon's game. Jackson Collins for KU. Chalmers. Jayhawks trying to answer calmly here. 7 05 left in the game. Thomas kicks it way back outside. Collins lets it fly and nails a three. Jerron Collins. The reigning threes all of a sudden. Woo. And the Jayhawk fans are singing a song of appreciation to their ball club here.
Ryan Davis charged toward the basket, got it inside and scored and was fouled. We have a timeout here, 6.38 left in this contest. AM hanging tough. We'll be back after this from your friends at Phillips 66. The Jayhawks lead it by six. Sixty-six here in Kansas City. Major excitement in the ACC. Clemson has not been to the NCAA tournament since 1996. Today, taking on Duke in the semifinals. Sam Perry will come up with a steal for the Tigers. Passes to KC Rivers. Clemson up by seven seconds remaining. And the Tigers are in the finals against North Carolina. Oliver Purnell's team has Clemson in the championship game for the first time since 1962. Back over to Fred and Swift. Well, been a little while, has it? Well, what does that mean for seedings, the selection committee tomorrow? Maybe a number one coming out of the Big 12. How about that? Could happen. And Texas and the winner of this one can decide that tomorrow, but Duke taking the loss today. They were kind of conceded the number one spot. That may not happen. So that's what it looks like tomorrow, North Carolina and Clemson. Travel call down there, and a and is going to get it back. Down by five and hanging around here with 637 left in this game. Hey, Rock Kirchner's team has done a job here in this ball game. They're playing their third straight game. Kansas out for the second straight day. And it does make a difference. Texas A&M draws good crowds right now when they're at home. Didn't bring a lot of people here to Kansas City, but you really hope their fans are appreciating their efforts here this afternoon. The ones that are in the building, the ones that aren't, are watching it on TV or listening to their radio network. These guys are putting on quite a show here today. Look, you sit here and watch this thing. How much is the resurgence of Joseph Jones meant to this team? Neil Bond. Got it blocked. It's a held ball, and the ball belongs to a &M. Well, we talked earlier about a little more bounce in his step, and now uh, you think of the upperclassmen and guys that could be playing their last game before they get into the NCAAs. There were no guarantees for these guys coming in. And seniors, they don't want it to be their last day. They want to stretch out as long as they can, get a sense of urgency to their game. He's playing well here this weekend. Mielbach, a tough drive. The shot wouldn't fall, but a foul call. And Mielbach will go to the line. The foul against Kansas. On Russell, Russell Robinson. His first. That's a six-team foul on Kansas here in the second half. AM with four. Mielbach. Bo Mielbach, a 6'5 senior. Knocks out his fourth free throw of the ball game. He's got a mark across the bridge of his nose. He got a knee banged up earlier in this. The way he plays, he'd be disappointed if he didn't have all that. Would have been a slow day at the office. He played college basketball. He played a lot of professional sports. Are you supposed to feel good at the end of the season? I don't think at the end of the season. They talk about it being a marathon. Well, you can forget the marathon right now. We're in the final stretch. If you got a kick left, it's time to go to it. You <laughs> said in this the, game. You rounded the last turn. Oh, look at Darnell Jackson go up and just hammer that thing home. And talk about a kick. Then you all had some kick. <laughs> the pick and roll. Kansas likes to run the sideline. Green for the wing. Kansas holding on to the five-point lead with 5.34 to play now. DeAndre Jordan tried to whip a bullet pass cross court. Got deflected, but they get it back. Now 14 to shoot. It's a good thing that was, Robinson. It's a good thing that was a snap pass or Collins was in position to intercept it. Oh, big three from Bo Mielbach. And look at the Aggies hang on. They're down by two with 5.15 to play. And the Aggie fans in Sprint Center on their feet and roaring. And a timeout here. And the Aggies come back to the bench with new life. 65-63, Kansas, 5.13 to play. Well, everybody landed some blows right now in this game. Slip the pick that time. Darnell Jackson to the rim. AM looking for the pick right there. The double team on Sharon Collins. He's hit some threes here in the second half. That leaves Darnell Jackson wide open. And you talk about a kid stepping up and coming through. How about Muehlbach, the senior, playing here this afternoon? Played a very physical game. Now he buries a three. 
winner of this one will take on Texas tomorrow in the championship game. Here's the advanced look at upcoming games brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. Keep the wheels turning. All day long we've talked about at upcoming games. we got upcoming game tomorrow. And who will it be against Texas? Mark Turgeon knows what he wants and he's fighting to get it with his team. Take a look at these two teams. Kansas expected to be at the top of the league. They were co-champs in the regular season. A surprise that A&M is the sixth seed. But how good is your league when you bring in a team of this quality and they're the sixth seed in your tournament? Pretty darn good. <laughs> Maybe Joe Lenardi's right. Six will be in the NCAA. We'll know about that, about that after tomorrow. After tomorrow. Mark Turgeon saying, yeah, you're my alma mater. Yeah, I love you. Now let's just see if we can just beat you. <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter when the bell rings, does it? Absolutely not. It's all about team and the university that you work for. See how good you can be. Rush from the deep corner. That one won't fall, but Jones just rode Jackson back out of there. And there's a foul as Brandon Rush got the ball. Fouls are starting to mount up in this ball game. Rush will go to the free throw line. A lot of, a lot of Seventy-nine percent shooter. A whole lot of contact in there on that foul. Everybody battling for that offensive glass. And Brandon Rush almost came away with it. Dominique Kirk is holding his right shoulder. He is in some pain. He's wincing in pain. Rush makes the free throw. When you see a player walking it off like that, he's staying away from the crowd, just trying to buy a little bit of time. Rush free throw good. He got them both. And Brandon Rush now has 22 points in this contest. Maybe 23 with that free throw. KU by four, 432 to play. We're getting to that stage in the ball game, Fred. You think back to the first half. This is where AM really started to come on. Kansas had a nice 9-0 run. AM had a better finish to the first half than Jayhawks did, and they ended up tying the score. Who's going to have the best finish here the last four plus minutes? Very well when the shot wouldn't fall. KU out running on the rebound. Two on two. Collins never stops. Now he kicks it back out. Rush deep corner. Long look at a three and he nailed. Well, Brandon Rush. My goodness. Good recognition. Kansas didn't have a numbers advantage. So Brandon Rush flared out to the perimeter. Sharon Collins found it. Down on the corner, he is something. Time out here with 3.53 to play. KU's lead goes back to seven. Again, this is a two-on-two -two break right there. Sharon Collins forces the defense in to take away his drive and the layup possibilities. Brandon Rush recognized the play as it unfolded in front of him. He fans out on that three line. Hit an important shot in this ballgame. Kansas is back up by seven. So now Brandon Rush has 26 points in this ball game. That's his career high. Does a and have one more charge left in them? They're playing for the third straight day. Okay, you got the bye. They were first in action yesterday. And they got an argument out of Nebraska yesterday. That's 26 points by Brandon Rush. Now let's talk about balance. It's the most by a KU player this year. Well, you talk about balance, evidence that they didn't have any players on the first team, all conference team. And they weren't upset about that. This is an unselfish bunch. They know that they're better when they play well together, and they don't care who gets the accolades. Joseph Jones nails uh, three. I believe that's a three. They're going to go take a look. Well, that's an important shot right there, whether it's a two or a three. The fact that Joseph Jones hit it, because AM is needing to find somebody to step up for them. Donald Sloan still over on the bench. He has been how Dominique Kirk is playing with a bad right arm right now. He's a wounded warrior for Texas A&M. So somebody else needs to step up. Joseph Jones at least found them some points. Well, we'll see if it's a two or a three. The officials looking it over with 341 left in this game. KU up by how many? We'll find out when we come back. 41 to play. Now Kansas up by four. That was a three for Joseph Jones and a big, big bucket at that. 
Rachel's headed over to the scorer's table to take a final look to see what the camera angles would tell him. Joseph Jones with both feet behind the line right there as Arnell Jackson steps out, tries to contest that shot. Now Joseph Jones was six of 18 from three-point land coming into this tournament. He's two of two here this afternoon. You know, recently a national commentator criticized him on the air, said he was playing slow and et cetera, et cetera. I think he paid attention to that. <laughs> he didn't like it. He's playing much, much better in the tournament than he was late in the year. Darrell Arthur, Kansas, 18 to shoot. Collins fires a pass. Demario Chalmers goes baseline. Jackson, Collins, 11 to shoot. Terrific defensive stand by Texas A&M. Double teamed the post, rotated the defense. Absolutely nothing there for the Jayhawks. Well, Collins had it down into the rim and it came back out. And it's going to be A&M basketball with 3-10 to play. And they're down by four. That was a great stop for Texas A&M right there. Kansas challenged them, got the ball inside. Eventually went to the double team, rotated the defense. Kansas looked to pass out of it to find the advantage. That advantage wasn't there. A&M got some stops late in the first half. That helped that late half run that they brought back to tie that game. Big stop right there for A&M. Both coaches have their offense in front of them. Mark Turgeon calling a play for his team as they cross midcourt. They have 14 to shoot, down by four. Down inside, Joseph Jones looking for some help now. Yulebach, seven to shoot. And he had Brian Davis wide open in the paint right there, but the strong defense from Kansas, Jones couldn't even see him. Kirk off target. He got it up with two seconds left on the shot clock. Jackson on the run out at the other end and nailed it. How agile is the big man? Whew. Now he cut about 15 pounds from last year. Thought he was quicker earlier in the year. You wonder how his endurance would be late in the season. I think he just answered. I think it's pretty good. Kansas by six, 2-10 to play. Kirk. Jones sets the screen. They don't use it. Down Jones gets the ball back to Kirk. Nine to shoot. Kirk and Josh Carter have got to get touches along with Joseph Jones. Jones kind of pulling his way into the lane. The shot doesn't fall. Big battle for the rebound, and Kansas comes out with it. Brandon Rush gets it to Mario Chalmers. A minute 44 to play. Kansas up six with the basketball. 18,000 of their fans on their feet and cheering right now at Sprint Center. And Kansas better this year at closing out ball games. Oh, Joseph Jones with a block attempt. He's going to be called for the foul. But Jackson went to the bucket. Well, you see Kansas hitting the defensive glass. Jackson up near the top of the circle. Once he saw his guys were going to control the ball, immediately takes the break. He's already ahead of the pack. And how about Mario Chalmers looking ahead? He'll draw an assist on that play. How about the catch? He didn't put it on the floor. The catch, the twist, and the easy shot over the rim. Again, Kansas by six, a minute 34 to play. Jackson gets him down. It's a seven point lead. So a three possession game for Texas A&M. They cannot miss on any of their next possessions. Kansas appears to have a pretty strong hold on this game right now, but A&M with an opportunity. Their veteran players, their perimeter players need to step up. And Mark Turgeon still has a lot of fire in his belly as he calls a timeout. He didn't like the set they were in, and he was upset with it. So he gets the timeout with 1.20 to play. Today's game has been brought to you by Phillips 66, gasoline specially formulated to clean fuel injectors, increase performance, and above all, help maximize mileage. Chevrolet, and your local Chevy dealer. Whataburger, just like you like it. Shelter insurance for your auto, home, and life. Seek shelter today. And by the U.S. Navy. Navy, accelerate your life. Well, you have to admire the way AM has just battled and battled and battled. Thing now, Paul, they've been playing at a very deliberate pace. 
and they're going to have to step up that pace to end the ball game and get some shots off. Kind of a battle of attrition. Certainly, they have been wounded, have lost a couple players to bumps and bruises, so they know what they have coming down the stretch. And they got some people that they can go to. Got some guys that can score on the perimeter. Got some people that can get it done in the paint. And they have shown that they can go toe to toe with the Jayhawks here this afternoon. But they've got to make up for some lost time. These are crucial possessions for them. Well, most coaches will tell you that there are no moral victories. Mario Chalmers has been named our defensive player of the game, our Navy defender game. Navy, accelerate your life. Not the first time he's been named a good defender. Won't be the last time either. All right, let's see what AM can get done. Well, Mark Turgeon with his last time out. Sure put together a set. Have a few options to run off of that. Gilbach got a great look for a three and he stuck it. Joseph Jones just absolutely wiped out Sharon Collins with a pick. Had him on his knees in the corner. That's the reason Mulebach was so wide open. <laughs> and now Russell Robinson fouled by Mulebach. So they're going to put him on the line with a minute three to play. The fourth foul on Mulebach. Mulebach moving without the basketball along the baseline. There's the tie up in the corner. Joseph Jones took Sharon Collins out of the play and Mulebach. Been a huge shot for the Aggies. You hear about in football guys getting flat back. <laughs> that just happened in a basketball game. Chalmers free throw short. And the ball to AM with a minute one to play. They're within three and they got the ball. And that's the stop that they were looking for. Dominique Kirk's going to go to the rack and he's fouled. He could get it down to a one point deficit, 54.9 seconds to play. And what about that dead right arm that Dominique Kirk had? He just took that basketball to the biggest, baddest guy the KU's got in the paint. Forget that sore arm. Dominique Kirk on the line. It's a two point game. He's a 76% shooter. Remember, AM had a better finish to the first half than the Kansas Jayhawks did. It's a one point ball game with 54.9 seconds to play. The teams will go to the bench and both coaches are going to be working really hard now. 30 second time out to Kansas. 73 71 Kansas here. The winner of this one moves into the championship game tomorrow against Texas. The Longhorns today beating Oklahoma in the first semifinal game. And now Kansas getting a strong, strong argument out of AM. The Aggies got a shot at it. They need a stop and a bucket. AM has gotten two stops on the defensive end. They've hit on their last two possessions. So they're in a little bit of a 5 0 run right now to get right back into this one. But again, remains the same for Texas AM. Tough, strong defense. Kansas needs more points if they're going to win this one. Russell Robinson has just come off the Kansas bench. He is checked in. We'll see the, the rest of the alignment for Bill Self's ball club. A&M needs to be strong on the defensive end. They'll come out in that man-to-man -man defense. Let's see how much pressure they're able to put on out front on the KU perimeter players. A&M has never advanced to the championship game in this tournament. Remember, they'd only won one Big 12 tournament game coming into this year. They've won two here, and they're trying to make it three. Plan on seeing them next year at the semifinals down in Oklahoma City. I would think so. Kansas has the ball in front by two. And a 20 second differential in the shot clock and the game clock. Chalmers, Collins, Russell Robinson on the perimeter, Jackson Rush, the post players for KU. They're going to go with a four out, one in look. I don't know Jackson swinging from side to side. He'll set picks. Robinson. Rush, 13 to shoot for Kansas, 31 left in the game. Robinson got it to the bucket. Spread the floor, open those driving lanes. Be patient with the attack. Now it's a four-point lead, a two-possession game. a and is going to have to go quickly. 21 seconds to play. Mulebach for a long three. Not there. Tip, no. Tip again, no. Jones couldn't control it. KU has it. 12 seconds to play. Chalmers fires it up court to Rush. Seven seconds to play. And Rush is fouled by Dominique Kirk with six seconds to play. Great ball movement got Kansas about six or seven more seconds off of that game clock. They wanted to foul Sharon Collins when he first got the ball. Then it turned into a game of keep away for Kansas. Sharon Collins kind of hurting in midcourt, but look at that bucket from Robinson. 
You think the Kansas bench is into this one? Strong drive by Russell Robinson, those last Kansas points. Rush again has established a career high. 27 points for him, and he'll get another free throw. The lead is now five with 6.4 seconds to play, and it's going to take a near miracle now for AM if they can pull it off. Kirk to the midcourt line, four seconds to play, fires a three off the heel of the rim. Collins has it for Kansas. That's game. 77 71. The Jayhawks win it, and they will advance to the championship game tomorrow against Texas. But I'll tell you what. They were in a battle here this afternoon. It'll be the third straight year that the Big 12 championship final will be Kansas against Texas. The first time ever in Big 12 history that the final game has been the same for three consecutive seasons. Kansas has won those first two. It's the second time ever that this has happened among the Big Six power conferences. The only other time was Pittsburgh against Connecticut in the Big East finals from 2002 to 2004. So it's Kansas and Texas tomorrow afternoon at Spring. Center and Brandon Rush is our Phillips 66 player of the game. Again, he established a new career high here this afternoon with 28 points and the most scored by a Kansas player this year. Great show by both teams here this afternoon. Texas Kansas tie for first place at 13 and 3. Texas gets the tiebreaker because of their home floor win against the Kansas Jayhawks. I guess it's no big surprise that both these two teams still be trying to settle things here tomorrow afternoon. Well, they've been the two dominant teams in the conference, so here they are. Again, coming out of it again in 2008, and they both earned the right to be there. You have to say that about them. Texas won the only meeting this year between the two teams. And that's, they tied for the conference regular season title, but that's why they were the number one seed in the tournament. And Rick Barnes said early in the conference season he really needed to develop a front line. He's got young players across there. They were a guard-oriented team early on. He went to work in league play early on trying to develop some young players. Right now they're playing as well as anybody. It's going to be a solid front line going out for Texas tomorrow afternoon. We'll have somebody else doing the game nationally. Certainly everybody in the country gets to see that. Been a real treat and a, and a thrill to get an opportunity to work with you for a uh, number of years. Well, I thank you so much for everything you've been to me and to all the rest of the guys on our crew. Thank well, you so much. Thank you. Uh, the pleasure's all mine. We got a bunch of guys out in the truck that are as good as it gets. Oh boy, we do. Yeah, we do. It's been a treat. Uh, again, Kansas wins it. My thanks to you all. Let's get you now to Doug Bell and Stacy King. Fred Split, thank you. Welcome everyone to Studio 66 for the last time this season and what a season it has been and the top two teams are going to meet tomorrow for the third year in a row. Texas, Kansas, I guess that's fitting because they're both vying for number one seed and they've emerged as the two best in the Big 12. Well, Doug, that's how it should be. I mean, these are been the two best, the most consistent teams in the Big 12 this year. Kansas had a hard fought game. They had to do Texas had an easier game with Oklahoma, but it's going to be a dandy of a final. It's going to be fun as we look at the bracket one more time. It's what we thought it would be. One versus two. Of course, Texas won that regular season meeting tomorrow on ESPN. Uh, two o'clock will be the championship game. I still think Texas or Kansas deserves a number one seed, depending on who wins that game tomorrow. I definitely do. I mean, Texas has a lot to prove. They've got some good quality wins. But the way Kansas came out in the second half and really took it to Texas A&M, 68% in the second half. Huge. I think the size is going to cause Texas some problems tomorrow. But you can't count out those guards. they got some exceptional guards over Texas. Brandon Rush, a career high, 28 to lead the Jayhawks today. What a year it has been in the Big 12 stage. It's been great working with you. Of course, Baylor was a huge story. They beat Texas A&M in the longest game in Big 12 history, that five overtime game. We had a coaching legend who called it quits in mid season down in Lubbock, Texas. Of course, there's a man named Beasley in Manhattan who made serious headlines. And let's not forget Texas and Kansas going for that number one seed. We also say goodbye to our colleague Fred White. Today was the last game he'll call on the hardwood. What a year it has been in the Big 12. We will say so long from Kansas City. Remember tomorrow's championship game on ESPN. There's the final score. For everybody here at ESPN Plus, thanks for joining us. This has been a presentation of ESPN Regional TV, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports.